A question for you, which car do you prefer, a BMW M5 or a M3? Well, it's a relevant question, isn't it? What do you prefer? A lighter footprint, a smaller footprint, lighter car, smaller displacement, or a larger vehicle with that proper power behind you? Well, that's the question you need to answer yourself when you look at the GT4 versus the GT3. In Sweden, the racetracks are very narrow, and in comparison to Spa, they are, you know, very tricksy. And um, from a Swedish, or should I say Nordic perspective, I actually think the GT4 suits the Swedish tracks much better than my previous 991.2 GT3. The GT3, well, you know, it's too much. You don't get any efficiency of that aerodynamic because you are rarely, if ever, about 250 kilometers an hour. You know, in Spa, those high-speed corners, we don't have that in Sweden. Therefore, mm, I think the GT4 might be a sweet spot in the Nordic countries. Is the 718 series from Porsche the new 911? For me, a 911 guy, it breaks my heart to say, in many cases, yes. I was head-to-head -head with a 991.2 GT3 with my 718 Spider, and we were equally fast. And he was running PDK. So take me on a trip, 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 nah, trip, trip, trip. Oh, I flick the switch, kill the lights. For the record, with my driving skills, I cannot drive the GT4 faster than my 718 Spider. That's a fact. Just go a little crazy and lose it I don't care if we're dumb It's the only way we know how to do it You make me feel so young I just love the color keys that you can get as an option so uh, I confirm the boot is as huge as in a Taycan this might be remember I daily drive my Cayman I didn't have any problem with that Anyway, confirming 981 exhaust system or the sound of the 981 is much better on the Spider and the GT4. So um, you could rush away to buy a new exhaust. But before you rush into changing your exhaust system at your GT4 Spider, you need to understand the complexity of the today's combustion engine. Remember the good old days when you have the motor and then piping behind it. Today it's different. You have the motor in the chemistry factory. That's a totally different ballpark. So I have drawn a graph here for illustrating the difficulties that the chemistry factory are, are, are conducting with. So here you have the torque and here you have the RPM of the engine. The green area here is the adaptive cylinder control to save fuel. So the way it works, when, when you have low torque on this area, lower, low revs here, uh, by shutting off the fuel to one cylinder bank, it will actually just run on three cylinders. It's called adaptive cylinder control, or as the engineer at Porsche would like to call it, smart CME flat six operation. So what it does basically then is to alternate between left and right cylinder bank and the reason for that is that the catalytic converter needs to be at the right temperature to work properly. So that's why they alternate to make sure that the temperature does not go down. You can actually experience this alternating by setting your cruise control to 80 kilometers an hour and then just listen. The sound will be like ooh dee, ooh dee. and that, that is why people try to say, oh, I need to get rid of that sound that they say well, they, sh they will you know, go to the flaps, but please be careful because the flaps also controls the temperatures within the system and messing with the flaps, messing with the temperature. So I'm not sure if there are other YouTubers on, the, on this um, channel, not on this channel, but on YouTube, that just mixing around with this. Mm, I need to say that you need to be careful. But what's even more important is that the um, 
Adaptive cylinder control is also used on the very high revving up to 8,000 on very low newton meter of torque. And the reason for that is that the particulate filter also builds up heat in the system. And therefore, they need to shut down a cylinder. But in this case, they don't shut off the fuel because the fuel is going to the cylinders and out in the chemistry factory to cool down it. So it is both a cooling system and a fuel, let's say, a fuel saving operation, the additive cylinder control. So just buying a new pipes is not the solution. You need to have proper engineer. And I am heavily looking in to this question. The first thing you should try out is to turn off the start stop function. That will also turn off the adaptive cylinder control, which is stated in the user manual. It's quite simple. GT car, manual gearbox, glove department, user manual, look up in this case launch control following the instruction on a gt4 and spider press down the clutch first gear full throttle it will stop at 5000 release release the clutch there we go How many cars are there manufacturing 2020 that has a proper instruction in the manual how to do a launch control with a manual gearbox and on top of that also you're helping you with the throttle to get that instant acceleration from 0 to 100. Rest my case ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Porsche. This is a driver's tool. This is a proper, proper I mean, could you compare this to another brand? In 200 kilometers an hour, the 982 GT4 creates 12 kilo more downforce in comparison to 981. Let me go through the aerodynamic. First, we all know the larger front wing that we have here that will actually push the air underneath the flat bottom in the diffuser in the rear. And also we will have some air passing by in front of the fender isolating making the air easier to pass the fender mm, really love this feature you could look at the aerodynamic sketches and the air is now traveling underneath the vehicle on top of it and finally the diffuser will push the, the car down and then to this huge wing but i have one thing to tell you about the rear wing if you're a teenager you would like a japanese car with a lot of horsepower and of course the most important thing a huge rear wing when you drive the car, you don't wear your cap like this. You flip it backwards. You know, apparently this is much cooler. And if Porsche have made this wing one millimeter larger, that would pretty much look like a Japanese uh, teenager automobile. So if you then, as I have seen other do, raise the wings on the GT4, well, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to flip your cap backwards. That's for sure. This is kind of a manual car and, and, and you feel it all through. I was so happy, remember, I, I returned to Taycan, jumped into this car and immediately this become very old school. That, that's not just a GT4, all other vehicles if you jump in from a Taycan will look very old. But in this case, I am a designer, the dinosaur as you all know. And finally I get back to these former PCM system that are much better. It's, more intuitive, it's easier to navigate, everything is better with the old PCM system and that is not a confirmation of the, the lack of development at Porsche, that's the lack of development from my side. But anyway, the driver position, oh, nothing to complain, remember P11 bucket seat is mandatory. And this is the thing, if you think that the P11 bucket seats are not comfortable enough for you and then you know, think about getting the comfort seats, then you're in big trouble because it's not just the bucket seat itself, then you will complain. The um, ride in a GT car, regardless if it is a Spider GT4, GT3, or even an RS, I mean, it is not a ride for the smooth European vacation. This is a driver's tool and therefore, if you don't select the bucket seats when you option out the GT4 or Spider for that matter, then it is the wrong model. That's just how it is. Also the noise level, I'm not sure if you could hear this, but... And it 
it, it is, well, it is, well, you can hear it because I have to shout more or less into the microphone because it's not a comfortable ride. It's a proper driver's ride and you want the noise, you want to get the connection, but it is not your European drive car. It is the true pleasure. This is Porsche, ladies and gentlemen. This is what everybody strives to get, to get that uh, magnificent ride. You know, I have to teach everybody one thing that I have discovered. When you drive the B-Road Drive, uh, in normal cases, we are used to second and third gear. And we have been talking in the forums about the previous and this version that is long gearing. I think this uh, gearing suits this engine perfectly, just as Andreas Preuningen said to me. But you need to drive it differently. Remember, this is not a turbo and you have to stress it to get that pure power off. So you have to learn to get the first gear in and it's listen to the stress of the engine. But this is 5,000 RPM and that is where you start to drive in the B-Roads on the first gear. And that takes some time because it is from 5,000 you have that Newton meter and then there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a proper, proper GT car. Down to second gear, 7,000 RPM into third gear, brake, 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 and into first gear. And into second, that's how you do it. You have to blend in the first gear when you drive this. It's a proper race car, that's for sure, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that experience that I just had is beyond that. You know, we can talk about Taycans and we can talk about any other brand. This is the driver's car, the GT4 and Spider. Uh, it's a matter of with or without roof. It is intense, but it took me a long time. Everybody knows that I received the car in October. We waited for um, spring to arrive, but what happened? It took me a very long time to do the review because the first month I wasn't satisfied with the car. And I spoke to other people that has jumped into the uh, GT4 Inspire. They said, whoa, Janko, what happened? What happened is that we have forgot to drive with the first gear. Ooh! That's how it should be done, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, I get so excited. The, 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 the blood in my body it's changed to gasoline and it's, oof. oh my gosh, this is, oh, it, it is, it is a proper drive, that's for sure. When I produce reviews, I wash the cars hundreds of times. You wouldn't believe me, I'm an expert in washing cars. But as soon as I get the car with PCCB brakes, mm, you know, getting rid of that brake dust really improve the speed of cleaning your car. Yellow calipers to a yellow car, big thumbs up. I appreciate colors and calipers when they match the color of the vehicle. But in size differences, that's not much to gain with the PCCB brakes in comparison to stock. 30 millimeters in the front axle and only 10 millimeters in the rear. You know, I know a stone can damage the ceramic composite brakes and when I drive, I just picked up something and I get tense. I'm so afraid of getting that stone in, in, in the braking system because that costs a lot of money when it, when it breaks down. So I am so worried when I drive the PCCB brakes. I mean, it's 10,000 euros per axle if I get that stone into the system. And it's, uh, it has nothing to do with my driving. That's why I'm not that satisfied driving with the PCCB brakes. Oh, I had it. It looks beautiful. And to be honest, I don't feel, I'm sorry, I cannot decide, but I cannot feel much difference. The, the, the natural aspirated engine, yes, please. Any question about that? No, nobody has questions about that. But remember, I'm gonna give you one big, big uh, perk with the turbo engine. Because if you, you know, just go on slow pace, you get that instant torque from about 2,700 RPMs. Carrera T, Cayman T, all those, and 992 Carrera S for that matter. Oof, that was an explosion. But you have to stress, this is a, 
kind of a proper race car kind of thing that it, it, you know you, you don't you don't drive this car like like you know it's driving Miss Daisy or something like that you have to stress it at all time remember first gear is always there to help you and and that that's that's what you need to do and also for me at least the sound is okay with the GT4 it's it's still I'm just comparing rubbish between rubbish so the sound is much better on a 981 but that's it that's it ladies and gentlemen I've been driven a lot of cars and the only thing that's better in the 981 is the sound but it is great and that could actually be fixed from a proper company that fixed the exhaust but apart from that um, the GT4 has with the sound composers that are fitted just behind me I don't feel as stressed as I do in my spider to fix the sound that's for sure so the GT4 I can actually live with but the spider mm, no sorry ladies and gentlemen that has to be fixed I feel honored that many exhaust manufacturers have approached me to do a review of the products but most of them, especially the British ones, do not pass my questions to verify whether they are plumbers or engineers. But I believe I have found one company that knows what they are doing. More to come on this channel. <sighs> you know, there are cars, you know, sometimes I say that uh, when I drive the Taycan for example that I just love driving the P load. The, you know, driving a GT car on on more actively is just another dimension. It is a true pleasure, and you and you have to focus. You you have to give that true, true, true experience and making it your drive, your connection, and and your ride, and it's filled by energy and it's filled by getting that enjoyment I'm sorry for all the words but it is it was if you have seen my video when I picked up my spider you know you get that big smile on your face because driving a GT car is just beyond it's what's you know that's the top when they started to engineer this car it's like okay guys let's start to engineer this car put driving on the very top of the list. That's it, that's, you know, bang. Ooh. I cannot, I cannot explain to you how filled I am with energy and excitement when I drive the um, uh, GT4 and Spider and GT3s, etc. It's just another level. That's why I aim for those cars because with I have had Porsche since I was 19 years old and believe me you need you need that little extra that these cars provide to really get that proper smile on your face you know I'm so blessed because when I was driving those B roads and I had that blast of driving you know if the car wouldn't would have quipped with deviated stitching you know the experience would have been pfft, nothing i'm very angry with porsche it took me a lot of training to say it remember i'm a true porsche enthusiast but i am angry with porsche because the conductor of the art of driving is the tires that sets the prerequisites and not be able to select the tires that you would like is for me stupidity it's volkswagen purchase department that wants to rob our last dollar we should, as customers, be able to select the tires that we would like to have. But it's very strange that in Scotland, when this car was introduced, all cars were equipped with Cup 2 tires, and the press car I'm driving, Cup 2. Why? Bose sound system. Can someone tell me why, why you spec a GT4 with Bose sound system? <sighs> I give up. I give up. What is it with people? <sighs> 7 minutes 28 seconds, 12 seconds faster in comparison to the older GT4. It's much more fine tuning when you go from a 981 to 982 GT4. The engine is more suited towards the gearbox if I compare it directly with the 981 Spider that I have been driving a lot. So the thing is that the engine is much more harmonized with this gearbox in comparison to the uh, older version. Here we are, the two twins. 
one that brings nature into the art of driving and one that are 100% track focused. Looking at the Swedish sales number for 10 of these cars that are sold, six are GT4 and four are Spider. If that is the market of which one you would select or Porsche's way of controlling the number of vehicle, that is not for me to answer. The 981 GT4 will always be the first GT4, but this one, the 718 982, will have the 4 liter natural aspirated engine that suits that gearbox perfectly. The Spider is unique, it's the first Spider that are bringing in that true motorsport department into the product. Also the Spider brings in the nature to the art of driving. So which of these twins to select? Well if you only are going to use your vehicle on track day I would select the GT4. If you want to have a blast on a Sunday drive then obviously bringing in the nature puts another lever in the art of driving. This one is much safer on the track. Hmm. I must admit that I was afraid that uh, should, there would be a differential feeling of driving these vehicles in terms of performance. We read the performance and they are exactly the same. I hereby confirm that it is pretty much 100% exact driving a Spider and a GT4, but with the exception that in the Spider you don't have a roof. Ridiculous back. A, a GT4 should be focused. What is this? Leather. On the spider, yes. Ridiculous. What is this? Porsche Sweden, don't get drunk when you spec your car. This is a GT4 for crying out loud. Alcantara steering wheel, yes. P11, yes. Club Sport, yes. Timing system, yes. Deviated stitching, bow system, no! Ugh. I'm gonna puke. And even worse, PCCB brakes and bow system. Oh! I'm getting too old for this shit.